Hello there, and welcome to the uh, Discover History YouTube channel, and welcome to part two of my videos on the Battle of the Haysong during the Battle of Waterloo, 18th of June, 1815. Yesterday I did a video that told you what happened at the farm at the Haysong, so you might think, why do I need to do a second video? I've told you everything you need to know, but history, and this battle in particular, is not that simple. The book I, the source I used yesterday was Jack Weller's Wellington at Waterloo. I chose this book for a very particular reason, a couple of particular reasons. One, it was published in 1967 and I first read it in the 70s. And it's the first book I read about the Battle of Waterloo. So everything I knew about the Battle of Waterloo came from this book. The other reason um, for picking this book is because it's over 50 years old now and it's pre-revisionist era, really, of history. Since that book was written, there have been countless volumes written about Waterloo. Um, we have a few here at uh, Discover History HQ. This one is one of my books. That's one of mine and Paul's books. And then there's the big Waterloo companion. History is not straightforward. Like I say, since this book was written, the battle has been revised. New sources, new information has come along. So there have been, um, like this book says, there are new perspectives. The great battle has been reappraised. It's been reassessed. Nothing stays the same in history. In Waterloo, although it's one of our the British history's most famous battles, when you start to read through all these books. There are so many contradictions, there are so many conflicting accounts, there's so many different opinions from different historians, different authors. When I say new sources come along, like I just mentioned then, there have been. The battle has been sort of reassessed twice, uh, importantly to my knowledge. The first time is, it's a very famous British battle, but it's being reassessed to be a German victory. Think about it, the Prussians came in and saved uh, Wellington right at the end of the battle. But also, when you consider of Wellington's 68,000 men, 32,000 of them were from Russian states. There were Hanoverians, there were Brunswickers, there were Nassauers. So there's a big um, difference of opinion from what Jack Weller would say, because Jack Weller uses mainly English sources in here. So you've got a German perspective. Also that's been reassessed is the Dutch-Belgian um, contribution to the battle, especially when it came to defeating the old guard. Dutch-Belgian forces, there were about 17,000 Dutch-Belgians on the battlefield. So you could say, yeah, it's not a, it's not a fully British battle. It, there was a lot of Germans, there were a lot of Dutch-Belgians. So the whole battle has had to be reassessed, re-looked at. Um, but what I, and what I want to do on this video is, after doing that, simple um, account of the battle from this book. I want to look at six points from these other books that if you'd read this book as your first book about Waterloo, then you read that book, you'd think you were talking about in some ways two different battles. It's so conflicting, it's so contradictory. So basically what I want to do here to get you thinking that history is not as clear cut as you might think it is from just reading one account, I'm going to go through six points that differ from my account from yesterday, from this book. Let's get back to it straight away. I would recommend, before you watch this, and you get spoilers, um, watch my first video from yesterday. That'll give you the background to all this. That'll give you the account of the battle. Then you can come back to this one, and then you'll see my six different points. So let's get started. I'm gonna use my map again. My diagram, my illustration of the battlefield. Okie dokie. First point, number one. Um, this barn door here that was burnt overnight. Um, Jack Weller doesn't say who was in this farm overnight. Um, from reading about it, yeah, I do believe it was 2nd KGL, the garrison that garrisoned it during the day. But other sources say that, yeah, it was burnt. There's no doubt that barn door was burnt by soldiers in here. Um, who did it? Was it Bering? Was Bering here all night and his men burnt it? One of the source in one of these books says that Bering's men only arrived in the morning and found it burnt. 
who's right, I don't know. With all these, I don't know who's right, I don't know who's wrong. Um, I'd like your opinions on who's right and who's wrong at the end, if you want to make some comments on this, because I don't know. They are just contradictions and conflicting accounts. That's the first one. Two, remember that when the French infantry first attacked this at 145, there was one division attacking here. One of their brigades went up the hill to attack the main line, the other one attacked the farm. Yesterday I said it was um, Bourgeois brigade of that division that attacked the farm. And Charlie, who's, who's commanded the other brigade, he basically attacked up the slope. That's what Jack Weller says. All the other accounts say no, it was Charlie that attacked the farm and Bourgeois who advanced up the slope to the main line. Odd, really odd. I say it's confusing. It's confusing. The more you read at Waterloo, the more confusing it could become. Number three. What happened to Baring, Major Baring, who was co if the commander of the uh, garrison here, when the Lunenburg battalion that was sent down um, during this big attack to relieve the garrison, when they were destroyed by the cavalry, what happened to Baring? I said yesterday that with his men, he got back into the farm and the Lunenburg battalion was destroyed and fled back up to the main line. Accounts, Other accounts say that Bearing, he didn't get back into the farm, he actually fled with the Lunenburg battalion and he only came back to La Haison when that first attack had been destroyed by the British Heavy Cavalry. Bit of an odd one. That's number three. Number four. Omptida, who was the brigade commander who was in charge of 2nd KGL Light, the 8th and the 5th line and the 1st KGL Light battalion, up on the ridge. He, Jack Weller says that the 8th and the 5th were sent down to relieve the garrison, help the garrison out on this later attack um, before the farm fell. Other accounts don't mention the 8th KGL line at all. They just mention the 5th line battalion of the KGL coming down to try and relieve the farm. And also who sent it down? There's a different opinion on who actually sent these two battalions, or one battalion, because I can't find anything else about the 8th. All I know about the 8th was that it was practically destroyed. It lost its um, regimental colour. Um, well, it says it happened here. Other accounts don't mention what happened to them. Um, but who sent them down? Um, well, it says the Prince of Orange. He sent Omptida down to relieve the farm. Uh, other accounts say that the divisional commander, Alton, on the orders of the Prince of Orange, sent down these two battalions, or this one battalion. Um, Omtida, when he basically protested about being sent down because he knew there was cavalry down here, um, did he say that direct to the Prince of Orange? Or did the Prince of Orange tell him, after Alton had told him to come down, you must go? Again, a bit conflicting, a bit um, confusing. I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, but in this attack down here with the either the 8th and the 5th KGL line battalions, Omptida actually died. He was killed when the cavalry attacked the infantry, one infantry battalion, or two infantry battalions. But even there, his death, there are contradictory accounts of his death. One of them, well, it says he was just cut down out here when the cavalry attacked. Another one says it was pulled off his horse and he was killed by the cavalry. Yet another account says that he was on his horse, he jumped over the hedge here into the garden here and was cut down and shot by a French infantryman. So there's at least two different accounts of his death. Number seven, and this is the last one I've got, is another biggie. It's when this relief force, these two or one battalions, were actually sent down to relieve La Haison. Weller says that while there was hand-to-hand -hand fighting here in the farmyard and Baring was being forced into the farmhouse here but was still on the farm, still holding out, being shot at point-blank range, bayoneted and everything, that's when these two battalions, or one battalion, were sent down to try and drive away the French and retake the farm. So yeah, they're still fighting, these two battalions come down. Another account would say that as 
Baring's men, 42 of them and himself, managed to escape out and were started to run back up to the ridge. That's when this one or this two battalions were sent down. The farm had already fallen. They were sent to restore it. Yeah, another account says it was because the farm fell at half past six. Another account says it was seven o'clock before the 5th KGL line battalion was sent down to try and take the farm. It's that's they're the, the bits that I find why I find Waterloo so fascinating and so frustrating and so confusing. You can't just read one account. If I just never read another book in my life that and I only read this one, then that would be how I saw Waterloo. That would be my account of Waterloo. But there are so many different accounts and each one in some ways says something contradictory, something conflicting. I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. I'm not saying that because this was written 50 years ago and didn't use a lot of like Dutch Belgian sources, Dutch sources or German sources, that's wrong. And I'm not saying that's right. It really is a conundrum. Uh, but that's what's fascinating about history. That's what I really find fascinating about history. That's all I've got on the Hay Song. I hope you find it fascinating. That first account from the Well, as I still find stirring, I, I always go back to that book. But there's so many other perspectives, reappraisals, uh, revisions. Um, it's just fascinating. And I just don't know where what's right and what's wrong and no one knows what's right and what's wrong. It's a big famous battle, such a famous battle, yet we know so little about it at times and there's this contradictory. New sources come along, someone has a different perspective on it, puts their spin on it, that's it. I'd be really interested in what you think about this battle, this small battle within the battle and what you think well, not what you think may have happened, but why do you think we get so many conflicting accounts of this battle? Uh, fascinating. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. That's mine. Um, that's my account. I hope you found it interesting. Please look at all our other videos on our playlist on Discover History YouTube channel. Um, and don't forget, like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, we are now, um, Discover History are now doing their tours around Worcester. So please look on our on our website, www. Uh, discover hyphen history at aol.com get one booked on one of those polls really knowledge about worcester fascinating tours to go on and that's it paul will be back tomorrow with another video that's what i wanted to say about hey lace on so i hope you found it really fascinating i'd love to see your comments about it all right stay safe and i'll see you soon bye